Migas. <laughs> Migas. I'm Rob. I'm Rich. I'm Roll. So how do you like your Migas? I like mine um, actually a little bit soft, somewhere in the middle. So it's not too crispy and it's not too like raw. I, I, I make sure that all the tortillas are definitely well oiled, you know, when you're when you're when you're flipping them on the on the on the thing. And before they get too crispy, that's when I chunk in the eggs and I don't do a, a pre mix in a bowl. I, I crack them all in the thing and then I mix them up actually in the pan. That's and then like, you know, like we, what you might hear later on, a little bit salt and pepper and then ketchup. That's a must. And then rich. rich. Pretty much, uh, I guess the whole thing over medium, uh, which basically means you heat up the oil, throw in the tortillas, get them. Uh, I, I don't wait for them to start to almost get crispy because what happens is while you're still cooking, they'll end up getting crispy on the way because you still got to cook the egg. So make sure they're oiled, make sure they start to color. And then I add the egg straight into the pan and then I do the let them congeal first before breaking the yolks so that that way I get white and the yellow mixed in and then salt and pepper it while it's there. Then do the flip, salt and pepper the other side. And pretty much that's it. After the flip, you make sure that there's nothing too jiggly and liquidy looking. and No egg done. juice. No, no egg, egg juice. juice on these. No egg <laughs> juice. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Uh, go Now, roll before we get into the actual – the the actual process uh, let's get your breakdown of migas well it's actually changed over time um we used to be able to to do the the three eggs or something like that and now when we make migas um we you know well how many tortillas do you use in the first place before i well um, wait, 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 wait. no 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 go ahead tell okay, us your thing and we'll break down the the the, so, the specifics right after, but yeah, let us know your so, style, and then we'll break down the actual styles. So we get the big pan out. Again, it's changed. So this is this is a recent. Uh, take the pan out. Take about three or four tortillas. Um, depending on how we feel, sometimes I, I do the the triangles. Um, throw the oil in, let it heat up. Uh, throw the tortillas in. Um, like you said, get them, you know, get them saturated with oil. So now what, what, what we do is we'll get the, a measuring cup and crack all the eggs in them. We don't mix them. We just crack them in there because for our family, we use about 12 to 16 eggs. And so as they're all, you know, we spread, make sure that the, the tortillas are all spread out in the big pan. and then pour the the eggs from the the measuring cup and like you said kind of let them you know let them kind of not sear but you know get a little bit of cooked get the spatula in there and start scraping scraping along you know mixing them up uh to get that little swirl you know but you get like like richard was saying you get that white and yellow because you gotta the balance yeah yeah um you know, in sections, flip them over because again, we have a you know big pan. And what do you got like an uh, Uncle Buck type pan? What 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 do you say big pan? What do you mean by big pan? What what is it the, covers two? It covers two and a half burners. Two burners or what? Like the like the square kind of pan or a big round pan or it's a big yeah, round it. pan. And so you, you did keep the snow shovel. You should see the toast to flip the pancake. Yeah. So yeah, and. After they, you know, cook a little salt and pepper. And of course, so it, it's actually, it differs for me. It depends on how I'm feeling and also the weather. Uh, sometimes it'll be ketchup or sometimes pace or sometimes uh, Texas Pete. And, and so, but the default is ketchup. I mean, that's, that's how we grew up. It's, I, I've, I've heard people like get grossed out when I tell them that I put ketchup on my migas. Do, do you put cheese? Uh, not all the time. 
Okay. Yeah, I've 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 it it depends on uh what kind of cheese that's available. If we're gonna if we're gonna get into the subject of cheese, it depends on what kind of cheese. If I have uh like shredded cheese, I'll kind of, you know, grab some and then kind of sprinkle around and that hold on. I kind of just if if I have some <laughs> or depending on if I have like sandwich cheese and I'm not talking about American cheese. I'm talking about like if I have uh Colby Jack cheese and I'll just kind of cut it and then throw it around to let you know the different things kind of melt all it's a monster. Whatever whatever so, happened to be there. So you go with Italian migas, you put provolone on those, mozzarella or I haven't tried that. Now I haven't tried that. Now that might be interesting, but I haven't gone Italian Italian migas. I haven't haven't done that, but I have actually. I'll instead I'll stick ketchup, with more cheddar. Instead of ketchup, you just beef. put a tomato sauce on there. Tomato sauce. A, Italian, Italian, Italian. You know. That's now what I'm talking about. I, I've 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 have I have gone with uh, like picante sauce or something like that, uh, but uh, usually the go to is ketchup. Now. The fact that now that we have Whataburger ketchup, I kind of like using the Whataburger ketchup because of the that vinegary. It's it, to me that ketchup always had more of a vinegary taste compared to Hans. The regular or, ketchup or the spicy? Not the spicy one, just regular. The fancy, fancy ketchup. No, it's fancy ketchup. Fancy, fancy, fancy ketchup. I, I think I, I think the uh, second batch spicy ketchup would be good on amigos because it's got the hot sauce flavor to it. Yeah, it already has that hot sauce flavor, so you yeah. don't have to necessarily add the hot and, sauce. And to it's it. not the same as the the hot or the spicy ketchup. It's different. That that came out while I was over here. There's another. Uh, what is it? Uh, is it Heinz ketchup? I don't know. What's what's the? So there's Del Monte Heinz. I don't do Del Monte. That's that's not. That's it would, not I, it would have to be Heinz. I mean, Heinz okay. is the one they, that we've been around forever. That's they had the one. Had. They had the one with like a hot sauce mixed into it already, and then they had one with jalapeno flavor in it, and those those tasted pretty good with the meat. Would you use the one with onions in them? No, no. That's like asking if you're going to get the mayonnaise that has the ketchup mixed in it already. The it's mayo chip. I I could never get. I can never get past the green and the purple and those weird ones. I can never, I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't get the, it into the, my mind to eat that The purple one. I think it was blue or purple. One of those seemed a little thick, the, the green one too. Cause we got the green one too at one time. Yeah. The reason they were trying, they were trying to get more kids to eat ketchup vegetables or whatever. And so that they were like trying to make, they can put it on vegetables or whatever. And maybe that would, that would convince them to eat it more because they were putting purple and green and shit. Why did why did mom and dad end up buying the ketchup with onions in it? Because I remember that ended up staying in the fridge forever, and it was like the backup. Like, oh, we ran out of ketchup. We have to use the onion one, and then we ended up giving it to Roland to our neighbor to spit it out in the, <laughs> the movie. in the movie. <laughs> it had the consistency we needed. I thought you were going to say for the menudo, but okay. Oh no, they probably did do that too. Now, now, in the process of, of the, the a critical part for me of when you're getting fancy with your migas or being authentic, mm -hmm. we're talking about tortillas. Now, there's white corn, yellow corn, all these other kind, hey, handmade are, in are the you bag. Telling me rolled, you've tried you know, blue yep, migas? Yep. Mm, I have pictures and, of it. Mm, I have pictures yeah. of it. I've tried sacrilege. It. No, sacrilege. No, no, no. Okay, specifically. Okay, so we're 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 all in the same page. No, it is good. I, I'm just letting you know. But but my go to is more yellow corn. Have you all so used for a while? Corn? They didn't sell for a while. They didn't sell yellow corn. Uh, you couldn't find. I couldn't find it. Well, I can't remember where I was uh, in New England. In oh, Maine. Yeah, yeah. There yeah, you go. They don't have yeah. yellow corn. It's all white corn. Yeah. So, but, then, but, but we're all in agreement. Yellow corn is probably the one that everybody should go with. Now, there are some people that like to cut little strips, perfectly cut triangles. I'm always, I've never, yeah, I've always tore, tore them apart. I've never. You, you got to have the jagged edges where ever some since, part of it's paper thin. And ever some ever since I cut that some... thumb at a certain place, I will not cut my tortillas with a knife. <laughs> 
So I use the I use the 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 kitchen uh, shears, the scissors. I use those and I cut them in triangle. I I I symmetrical. (laughs) Those are supposed to be used for chicken bones to be cut through, and that I mean I don't know about using it for tortillas. No, we Mm. use the. Our, our, it, our even sh- even Shiloh dude, is kind of shocked at that dude, revelation. That that's like that's like eating candy bars with a with a fork and knife, <laughs> or cutting your mashed potatoes when you dig into them with this with the fork. You still use the knife to cut them, and they're mashed potatoes already. I've seen it. Now, have you done any hybrids like doing a chorizo migas combo? I'm yeah. gonna try that now. Now that I'm bringing that up, I might as well I, try it. I've thrown like. Um, ham just to you know just to try something i've thrown maybe ham but i don't make it a regular thing to there's something there's something about the tortilla egg just salt pepper and just the the little thing and that classic thing i don't know it's it's very nostalgic you know and all that to 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 have that combination if i overcook it because i turned away and let the uh, the tortilla or the egg get too crispy, dude. I'm like when you get an omelet and you leave that egg in there too long and it does that little brown that crust. Burnt. Yeah, I like I get all wheat out because you give it to the kids, right? And you make yourself another batch. <laughs> there you go, good kid guys. Y'all want some? <laughs> I got my time. I got my temperature just right now. I figured it out to go this way a little bit more. Now oil. Do you, what do you do? You, I've I've used olive oil. I've used vegetable corn, corn oil. I've used them all. Is there something that you guys go to? Crisco. Crisco. Really? Crisco. Yeah, the the lard. Holy! You stick the end of the guy? spatula in there, and dude. I, I don't think I'm it. allowed to have that in the house. I don't think no, I can. No, no. That that's that's the original way of cooking them. That's you don't get the same flavor with oil. Right, right. right. You have that. You use the, use the, the butter flavor. Either. The butter flavored mm, kind, or no, just just regular, no, you, just the white one. The, the white the Monte Carlo. Have you made that roll? Have you used no. Crisco? <laughs> no, we all did. We all did at the house when we were growing. Well, up. at the house, when we're talking about grown up, we're talking about not no, growing we, up, but grown up, growing no, we up, and realizing that. we're not supposed to eat that. Yeah, so it's, it's there. It's so there for a reason. Uh, for a while, I was using. We were using coconut oil. We were using coconut oil for a lot of stuff, Hawaiian style. It's okay. It's okay because he was cutting him with shears. Yeah. Okay. He was doing. The it, it was my. It was. It was the main years. It was the main years. You see, it was getting close to the other border, and it's, you know, you start the winter migas. Sprinkle, sprinkle the shaved uh, coconut at the end as a garnish. Did you use uh, Himalayan pink salt too with that? No, no, no. Pineapple, right? You added pineapple. Oh no! <laughs> Pepperonis. I- we could have chili, so we use pepperoni. <laughs> so, when Jess and I went to a, a bed and breakfast up there in uh, New Braunfels, like I, you know, I remember you telling me this. I remember the story. Go and, ahead, it's a good story. Um, we had breakfast, and the guy, like, there were migas. I was like, oh, I, I've never seen it really in a in a restaurant, and they looked fancy. They were. It was not the way we made them, and I made it a point to go look for the cooks. And ask him. Oh, I thought you were going to say you did the Johnny Depp thing from Once Upon a Time in Mexico. No, it needs to be made like this. I asked him. Uh, ended up making him cry because he was. He started telling me the story of he went to culinary school and all that, but how he makes his migas is how his mom made them, and she had passed not too long ago uh, from when I talked to him, and that's how he makes them. And we started talking about different ways of making migas and he said that there's people he knows that grab tortilla chips like Mm. from a bag throw them in throw peppers and onions and all this stuff while cooking them and then the egg and i'm like i i i was i i didn't realize that people messed them up like that dude but again it's all it's all personal taste but and it was funny because this story led to me talking with my friend Les because he grew up in New Braunfels and he was Braunfels. I don't know how, whatever. Um, 
And he was telling me about, you know, he, he was, he was Caucasian, but he grew up eating meat guys. His, his mom would make them. And he was like, man, she made, and she pretty much made them like we did. And, but we were talking about, he knew people that made them differently. And then I remember we talked about it. Then I talked about it with you, Rob, because I was saying for us, we were talking about making a book about the, just going the around yeah. Texas and, and finding out how people make them. And then with you, I was saying we should do a documentary. And slowly that, that was kind of always up in the air. And then when we were doing our, our other thing, our other podcast, we have a tendency to, right. to, to just chase a squirrel, you know, and we were just, our, it's just a jumble of everything. And then we, for some reason, we just, me guys, that's. Yeah. That so became the do- code word, code word me guys to bring this conversation back. But on the contrary of this show, it actually, we want it to go that way. We want to, we want, because those seem to, uh, a majority of the time that seems to be the more interesting of the conversation. I, uh, as we were getting closer and as we've been redoing some of these episodes, I've actually went to YouTube and started looking at the different ways people have been making Migas and I've been shocked. I've never found somebody. Now I'm pretty sure if we look hard enough, we're going to, we're going to find somebody that does it the way that we do it. But I'm going to tell you this right now. I've seen, Everybody cuts them neatly with knives, little strips or triangles or something like this. All the videos mix the egg as scramble, like scramble eggs, and then they pour that into the migas. I've seen some where they get chips and they put them in the oil or whatever, and then they take all that and dry them out on paper, then put the eggs and then put the chips back in there. And I'm like... Whoa, 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 what is that's this? Almost like, that's <laughs> almost like pouring milk and then the cereal. Yeah. And I, a, we're, gonna a, drain, we're gonna drain the milk so they're all nice and soggy. And I don't know, dude. It was it's so but it's you know, the most so, bizarre. I mean, but that I mean everybody says that, and then they said we're gonna show you how to do and and when they did the tortillas, the raw tortillas, like the regular corn, the way we did it, they made them like real crisp, and you go, Yeah, you want them real, real crispy. And then we're going to dump them out and, dump, you know, into a thing. And then one was like, okay, we're going to make bacon. They made all this bacon and left all this grease. And so we're going to make it in this bacon grease. And that's how they. Well, so that, the, that, that's the Monteca. Yeah. That's the, right. uh, that's yeah, the Crisco. Yeah. yeah. That's the, 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 the original, the original Monteca type. Let, let me ask you this. We, we talked about eggs and tortillas, but now we, depending on like my, you you Roland, you've got a, a, a larger family. Uh, so when you're making a batch of you're gonna have these larger numbers of, of ratios. Uh, but when you're making like uh, uh, say like you wanted to make yourself a snack, you're gonna go to the kitchen. What is your preferred single portion ratio of miga? Like when you're making it eggs to tortillas, how many eggs to how many tortillas do you usually use? Um, if I if I were to do it for myself, for it yourself. would be probably just a two, three, and maybe one tortilla. Um, wow, a lot of egg. What size egg? Extra large. No, we get large. The, we get the jumbo. Jumbo. Okay. Extra large to jumbo. Ostrich. But again, extra. I I like I like egg. I like. I mean, but that free range brown. We no, like to know the name. We like to know the name of the chickens. The Sat on by goats. The blue egg is better. Have yeah, really with yellow, with, yellow, orange yolk, yolk. With with blue tortillas and blue oil. Yep. With blue coconut his oil. house with the blue little window. Coconut what? oil and 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 pineapples, pineapple and and sprinkles of coconut at the end. Now mine's the mine's the real ratio, the normal one. I'll do for for a single helping of me. I'll do me, three eggs, me get help four tortillas, maybe five tortillas but with three eggs. Now there's a catch to that. Now, if Nick is making it, he's got six eggs, maybe five or six tortillas just for himself. So he goes six to six. Um, Dude, roughly, what, the, maybe, what kind of pan? You're going to use a, the, the uncle buck pan also, or what, what no, size no, pan no. are you using? Um, what's, what's her name? Um, I think the pan we have Rachel right now. Rachel Ray. What's, no, Pioneer? No, no. Pioneer we, we women? 
No, no. What's Garth's uh, wife's name? Uh, Kim Basinger. No, not that Garth. The other Garth. <laughs> uh, Foxy. The singer. Oh, um, uh, Trisha. Trisha Yearwood collection. So yep. actually, so now you know what though. Recently, I think it's a we support. I think it's we a just support pan. We recently, instead of using the big, instead of using the big pan, <laughs> the big. And I'll show it next time. I'll show you guys next time. I don't want to go digging for it. But we use uh, two cast iron. Uh, I was going to say, is so, it cast iron? You have to yeah, build the fire outside and <laughs> and get the propped up uh, grill, the one that sticks into the ground with the and make some pan de campo on the side. So, so do you good. guys do, do, do you guys uh, do sides? Well, sides. it depends. Refried uh, beans. Have, when I would visit. Um, I was always asked, do you want some refried beans on the side? And she would, and mom would make some refried beans and then put them on the side, you know? And yeah, I, I usually have, we have a, we have refried beans on the, on the ready, but see, and it's funny because my kids have grown up eating can. Cause again, you know, Jess isn't Hispanic. They don't have beans in Maine. So you all had to, <laughs> <laughs> it was black beans and Bush beans. Bill. Bush what was beans. the brand though? What was the brand of can? Rositas, yeah, Garab, the Garab bean one, the yellow one. I, Gephardt or get whatever yeah, Gephardt. Gephardt. Yeah, I we we had that once, once. Uh, -uh. no, that. But no, uh, so usually, um, I I get them and they're. But I was saying, I remember, I remember in the mornings, mom taking the beans from the night before. And getting them the yeah, Monteca out of, again out of, and, out, of the, out of the white Tupperware and putting them in and, and mashing them up. Yep. Real refried beans. Uh -huh. and, and, and I explain that to the kids because I'm like, that's why they call them refried beans because they were made usually the night before and, you and in the morning. Yeah, and you smash them up and, and refry them. And restaurants, they'll make refried beans, but they make them as refried beans when they first make them. They don't, yeah, they, seen, they're not refried. I've seen, they're just smashed. I've seen. I've seen a, a video where they were making refried beans and they take the, the, the dry beans and blend them. So they make them almost a powder and then they, they, they cook them like that oh. and make them refried beans. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, instant, instant refried. Yeah. That's <laughs> and it's like, can you really use the word refried when they just be fried beans? Uh -huh. So it's, but now, is like there said, any is there any shame in eating this uh, closing counters mountain of migas on a plate? <laughs> is there? No, any, you made them for yourself. I mean, in all honesty, um, when you make them for yourself, and yeah. and you've got you know you've got the mountain of them, what ends up happening is you're going to sit there, and even if you only get halfway through it and get full, you're going to keep pushing through because you made them. Yeah. Yep. You know. So. So it gets to a point where Jess makes, even when we were using the big pan, Jess would make two batches, one for me and the rest for the family, because she knows how much I love Migas. And so she makes sure I get a big portion. So like I said, though, you were talking about snack. Now, if I'm waking up and making the Migas for me in right. the morning, it's a different ratio, but I mean, if you're you're using the word snack, I'm not gonna make it the same way I do it for. for oh, breakfast. I make it all the way the same. <laughs> so, but you know that's the thing, and so for at first I used to make them, but now it just makes them because I mean they, they the kids like them. So my oldest daughter, we, you want to talk sacrilege? She pulls out the mustard, and I'm like, what? And so what kind of mustard? Because Frenchman's just oh, regular French, not, Plockman, not not dark mustard or Dijon or spicy mustard Dijon gray no, poupon gray poupon Plockman's was pretty good Plockman's so but, I mean mustard. so and it's because of that that you know a lot of the kids like took after you know there, there's times where we're, we're eating breakfast and I pull the ketchup out everybody's like already started eating and I'm like nobody wanted ketchup and everybody's just like do we have mustard? I'm like, it, go to your room. Oh no! <laughs> so it's, it's, it's because of the old. It's because of the it's oldest. Because of daughter. me. 
the main influence. No, no, she what, what, loves she just, mustard. She loves yeah, mustard. Yeah, so, yeah. so but, has anybody yeah. has anybody dared to put mayonnaise? Only Hellman's, but no, I haven't dared. Yeah, I haven't we don't dared. have Hellman's here. Now, what if I hell? if it had the lime one, the Mexican, no, one, it's not the one with lime. I think I probably would try that one. So again, if we I don't have Hellman's. We do not have Hellman's here. Oh, it's called Best Foods. So on the on the jar of Best Foods, it has a little disclaimer saying, uh, "East of the Rockies, this is known as Hellman's." Right. I've heard, I've seen that. I've seen. I've yeah. So yeah, they they can't call it for some reason Hellman's over here. They call it best foods. And there's, like I said, there's a disclaimer saying east of the Rockies, it's Hellman's. Quick. Oh, good. I thought you were going to say uh, it's a disclaimer saying due to copyright infringement, we cannot say it's Hellman's. And also, yeah. it, it's in California, so it may cause cancer. Oh, there you go. And the emissions that are released for anyway. Uh, quick, quick thing pepper that you use, is it the fine grind? Thing that you pull the thing and it's fine grind or do you fine grind or do you, or do you grind it coarse black and you grind it yourself with the pepper grinder it's whatever's it's available you know. when i open the cabinet what, you, what do you prefer though is there one that you prefer um it depends on the cracker we have if, if it's uh if it's the if it grinds it if i have it set to be the right consistency the the grinded one but uh, if it's too chunky, if I don't have it set right, then yeah, it's like you get those kernel. Yeah, that's like little... eating beef coda salami and forgetting to take out one of the peppers and you bite into it and you're it... like, you know, you mess up your whole flavor. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just waiting. You know what? We need to look because I'm pretty sure there's someone who just puts peppercorns and they're like, here. Oh my god. It makes it brings the, the, I'm gonna put the flavors. Out. I'm gonna put capers all anyway. Uh, what kind of salt? Same thing, pepper shaker or the more regular salt. Morton's. 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 Yeah, it's, it's it's either the, we keep Morton's in the in the shaker, but we also have kosher salt, and we also have um, of course we, we have different we Himalayan have different salt. pink salt. Yes, yeah, no, we don't have yes, any do. of that. I don't think, but but we do have different salts due to baking reasons and and stuff like that. We keep several so for, different salts. Right, and so for a while we used to mainly have Himalayan pink salt and different and sea salt. And then we had to start buying Morton's again because the mom told us she was allergic to sea salt. And I remember that salt. conversation. It's like your dad and I are allergic to sea salt. We can't eat because they started Just adding to, sea salt to the, the the restaurants. And like we we bring our own salt. And we just say no salt. Like, we do our own. And so, of course, you know, you had to do I, I we would do the thing. Oh, yeah, no, it's regular salt. And then they eat it. I was like, ha! <laughs> it was sea salt the whole time. I knew it. I, ah! <laughs> I knew it. No. But, I mean, yeah. So we actually started buying regular salt again and having more of it on hand because of... Because of you like to sprinkle it like this? Well, no, because he uses he uses the, the coarse salt. He doesn't use more that's, like fine... That's yeah, for we've pink got, Himalayan. We've got coarse, we've got coarse Do you remember... Too. Do you remember when dad used to buy the non-sodium salt? Yeah, that was the one that stayed on the table and nobody would touch it. <laughs> I'm you like, how do you... Hold on, let me go to the cabinet and I'll come right back. It's like, how is there no sodium in this? Just pass, oh, me, I mean, the Mrs. Mrs. pass me the Mrs. Dash. Oh my gosh. The Mrs. Dash. Hey, but you know what? Then we used to put that in the chili. Just to put it in everything. 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 Was like, it was that, worse than that, that was, sandwich mix stuff that, that, that you was would like use. All spice. That was all spice. <laughs> we the, the sandwich, sandwich spread, spread. With olive loaf with olive loaf. Off orange color, whatever. And, and chop and chop chopped ham. All the Pressed stuff. Ham. Pressed ham. That quick, was a chopped a quick quick thing. <laughs> worse mega experience probably at a restaurant I'm, I'm pretty sure that that you guys ever had like you went in ordered some migas dude i'm i want to hope that one day i'm going to go into like a restaurant and they're going to deliver you know some decent migas and it's it's always a disaster i try to get migas in a taco they don't taste right i try to get it different places and 
the only way that I'm going to mask that if it's a la mexicana. That's the only way I can eat it from a restaurant. So, so no, here's the thing. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, you know, you can request how you want the tortilla cooked at the restaurant, right? You but they say just, but crunchy, they, but they throw light. all the chips. When you say crunchy, they're gonna throw a bunch of those potato, like, but well, not potato, but potato corn chips. chips. <laughs> but it's corn chips. I mean, I don't no, know. No, no. Have you eaten it at El Mexicana over in in Taft? No, I don't make my that own. One, that one comes out pretty good. Okay. When is when was the last time you think Robert has gone to Taft, let alone past Gregory? No, like no, to I, go I, to I, Gregory. I drove through. No, there. No. That's what I'm saying. You and you lock the doors and roll the windows up. I'm talking about but when that's the, the documentary time? though. That's will force the documentary to happen. Going to these small areas and trying to see if somebody is making them that way. Because like I told you, I looked on YouTube and I was disappointed at every video. I mean, they probably taste good. I just the, the way that they were cooking them, I just couldn't get over them. Okay, you ready for this? You ready for this? Some of the I'm not gonna say the best, but some of the better ones that I've had have been at Torchy's Tacos in San Antonio. See, I haven't been there. I haven't been there. They came out they came out like like they were using a thinner tortilla, a thinner corn tortilla. And they asked you if you wanted softer crispy? Or do you no, have to no, no. mention the, these it? ones? I actually ate a little bit more crispy than I normally would, right? But they were really, really good because they were lighter. Yeah, they, they were, it was right. a, a thinner tortilla, which I don't know where if you can buy thinner tortillas. Like, I was thinking, uh, they you, know, be white corn. You, you know, when they white put corn, uh, it, it was yellow corn, really. But, so, usually yeah. I see the white corn are real thin, but not right. yellow corn, usually right. they're the but, thicker. But here's the thing, um. You know how you mentioned the chips, throwing chips in that some people would do that and cook it. I don't think they would be so bad if they use the restaurant style Tostitos. The, the real thin, thin ones. Yeah, yeah the real yeah. thin ones. They're, those are cantina style though, aren't they? The mega, yes, the yes, mega thins. Yes. There's a company but that they, they sell they have, mega thin chips. They have there. restaurant style things. and then they have uh, the Tostito cantina style ones. And the cantina ones are super thin. Yes. And that might soften in the oil and still come out with a little crisp to it, but still soft enough. So like the chips at Chewy's? I don't like Chewy's. Are they thick? Are they thick? No, they're they're so, kind of thin. No, they're they're, they're kind of thin. So thin. now in South Texas, you can pretty much ask any oh I I'm 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 any Hispanic and they'll they'll know what migas are, right? Mm, no. Would you think? Would you think? Uh, you have to be because, a certain age, I imagine. Because over here in Mexifornia. Some of these people, I'm bringing it up, and they're like, "What are those?" And so, is it a Tex-Mex thing, or I found a few people who do, but I went online. Like I said, from, they're also from New Mexico and in Texas. So I was watching those I, videos, and and there were a lot of some of those people weren't from Texas, but some were saying Spanish style, and I'm like, I've never heard of the Spanish style miga. But no, 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 yeah, it, look it up. There's there's the Mexican uh, food. Uh, show that's on pbs and she patty she she is that the patty's, one patty's kitchen and and she made migas and and showed the different ways that you can make them and and she's from mexico right but she's a chef and she's you know yeah I've, I've seen so, see, and and so i think that's the thing is that a lot of places aren't gonna make them the way we do because they're a restaurant and they have to church it up a little bit because it, uniform, unless you go to a uniform unless, cut, you know, unless style it's a presentation, unless it was a place like you know, um, well, if it's a taqueria, you know, a taqueria is different than a restaurant, and same with no, a, a food truck. I understand that, but so I'm saying, like, so <laughs> growing up and going, like, you know, when Jess and I would, you know, in, in Maine go to the the chain restaurants like on the border, and you know, you go to all these places. I we grew up going to you know, raised Mexican restaurant, we, you know, Casa del Roy. And to me that I, I always think, well, that's the, that's the kind of thing you would want. Like we went to on the border. I remember when we first moved to Maine and that was the first time I ever set foot in on the, you know, on the border and everything was all fancy and colorful. And I was like, just give me the silver, the aluminum plate or whatever with the rubber, you know, like Ray's Mexican restaurant where, you know, that way you wouldn't burn your hands on the edges. And 
it, it didn't matter the presentation of the plate. It was the food. And you go to a lot of these restaurants and again, they, they church it up. It's culinary, you know, situation and again, but you know, they're a chain. So they have to, yeah, they, 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 they make it a certain way and it's, it's churched up. And so I remember when I posted a long time ago and this was the first time I had heard it and we've talked about it, um, you know, cause Jess had made me some amigas and somebody commented on it. And you remember they're like, that's a poor man's meal. That's always been a poor man's meal. And I'm like, well, yeah, cause y'all were poor. Like it was the truth. Like this is where a lot of these foods come from. You know, you look at anything, and and you fajitas, look at the south. Fajitas were tough cuts of meat. It was the throwaway meat, and now it's a it's a delicacy, and everybody. Well, wants that, that's the, the same. That's the same thing with all the uh, like sweet breads and, yeah, and all things the like plants. that. It, yeah. It's all the parts that that the the Caucasians would not eat. And and so they that are. was and that was a family member who was like, "That's a poor man's meal." It was always a poor man's meal. And I'm like, so, you know, and that, that goes almost to cheese enchiladas. I didn't know the reason grandma made them. Dad said, well, yeah, because of Lent. Couldn't have meat. And so she would make cheese enchiladas. And that's why he loves cheese enchiladas. I didn't know you could put chicken and stuff in them. I was like, no, no, no. You just open up a can of Wolf Brand chili and pour it on top, you know? No, 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 no. no there, there's a thing about that. Um, I was talking to a person who used to work at Ray's Mexican restaurant back when it was in its day. I mean, um, they she went and soon as she we got hired, she had to go and get her hair done a certain way. They hairsprayed it. She said she had to keep that hairdo for like the week because that's what they was expected. They couldn't lie down on a pillow a certain way because it would mess up the hair. But she said the, the thing about their enchiladas and the thing about the, the way that they would uh, cook their stuff was they were the only restaurant to this day that would do, use, and she said the term chili con carne for the enchilada. Yeah. And that makes a difference. I mean, it, you know, you hear enchilada gravy, you hear all this thing, but they would use chili con carne and that's what made theirs a certain way, you know. Right. And so, well, yeah, that's, and like I said, I'm talking about the Wolf Brand chili because dad would always, you know, we talk about it. He'd be like, yeah, you open up the can. So that's like, like I said, you know, you were talking about finding a place that made the migas like we grew up eating. You know, that's like trying to find a restaurant that makes enchiladas like mom. And, you know. Well, you know why mom would make the enchiladas the way she would make them, right? That's why dad liked them. Dad yeah. liked them a certain way, so she would get it as close to grandma's recipe that she could right. that she could get. Right. And that's that's what I'm saying. And so luckily, you know, when she showed um so here's the thing, you know, she showed um Mia how to make them. And she had Mia had seen before her other grandma from you know, like um Mario's side. And she made them the same way. So when mom was making them and showing Mia, Mia kind of already knew because she had seen her other grandma make them. And it was the same way. And she's from, uh, you know, they're, they're Spanish, but um, you know, they were, uh, she's from California. And so she, usually I see other people and they just get the red sauce or, Oh, I like green sauce. And I'm like, I don't know, but then again, you know, Mia likes them with chicken, and I, I don't. I, you know, she'll make chicken enchiladas, and I, I don't. I'm, I'm, I grew up eating cheese enchiladas, and that's what I like. And then, like I said, sometimes, you know, the the chili, you know, little little here and there. Yeah, any any time I've had the chicken, like chicken enchiladas from a restaurant or something, they've always put like a white sauce on them, or or a verde sauce. And then yeah. they would have they would have the like the queso fresco crumbled across the top of them, and that to uh, me, mm -mm. Mm. but that's me. Nick Nick loves enchiladas verdes. So, yeah, but he also doesn't like. 
one brothers. So, um, where well, go ahead. I, I, I got a question before it's time, and I yeah. know it's getting close. Yeah. Um, uh, Chilequiles. The bastard child of. Me. <laughs> Now, I I was at a, at a fancy, I, I call it a fancy, but a very popular restaurant in San Antonio. And we were there and I wanted migas and they did not have migas on the on the menu. So I ordered chilaquiles, but I asked them if they can add egg because they the way they had it set. And if they can take out everything else except the tortillas. Uh, and I wanted them cooked softly. And they were looking at me like, and they said, that's migas. I go, but it's not on the menu. So give me chilaquiles, <laughs> add egg, and take everything else out of it. And they were looking at me like I was crazy. But it was a very prominent bakery restaurant in Market Square that I had to order it that way. I did not have so, turn out. No, it actually came out pretty good the way I told them to make it. <laughs> but, Can I just but, go to the back? Can I just go to the back and make it myself? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll make it, it. I'll make it myself. Yeah. 